And that's basically what you'd be. You'd be improving on the buy stuff. And mm-hmm. that's what, again, that's why my channel ain't that probably ain't that popular because they don't y'all talking about this kind of shit. Because if you realize how you being programmed, mm-hmm. you, your ass ain't just back. You ain't valuable as you they want you to be. You Let's just be. say, yeah, we're not conspiracy theorists or anything, but we do know there's a fact that certain platforms that we perform on, we're not going to say their name specifically because we appreciate them for what they do for us, but they do make it so you don't see certain content and you don't get certain knowledge. They know how to push the BS to you. When you see the suggested videos and all that, it's usually BS, but it's rarely some real stuff. And I'm gonna get off my soapbox about conspiracy theories. (laughs) If I was talking about more about dumb shit, I, I would be a lot bigger. Facts, man. Facts. I had a conversation on my show about uh, there's a big YouTube beef thing going on with YouTubers beefing against everybody. Lonzo, I don't know if you know it, but it's like it's like 1990s hip hop here. We got East Coast YouTubers beefing with West Coast YouTubers. People saying, meet me here, meet up, let's box this, this and that. And it's so corny, man. And I could ju- I, I, people have dissed me. I could jump into that realm and get 100,000 views per video and all that. But that's not what I'm about. I'm about positivity and peace and save me with all that madness. When I, when I first started doing YouTube, I took a class um, um, from the, from the uh, Urban League. They had a class for, 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 for seniors, okay? Yeah, I'm a goddamn senior. Um, on mm-hmm. social media and stuff like that. And I asked him, I said, man, actually, actually instructor, I said, hey, is it possible for me to be a popular YouTuber and maintain my dignity? He said, probably not, okay? <laughs> and I said, you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna try, mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it. Like I always have, I've always done things my way. I can't just do bullshit, man. I'm not a bullshit person. I love to bullshit around and have fun, but I'm not a bullshit person. There's certain things that just not, I'm not gonna, I'm not attracted to and I can't, I can't disseminate. That's just not yeah. You know what, speaking of, speaking of bullshit, uh, I asked you this question about a month and a half ago, and I'm going to ask you again, because last time I asked you, you were familiar with the name, but you really didn't know much about it. But I would love to know your thoughts if a month and a half later you are familiar with this person. Are you familiar with Charleston White? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been checking him out. I've been checking okay. him out. Yeah. There we go. So, okay, about a month and a half ago, I didn't get this response, so I kind of moved on. We didn't really talk about it, but, you know, from the videos that you've watched of Charleston White, and I know but by me saying the name, pretty much everybody knows. I had Charleston White on my show about a year and a half ago before anybody even knew who Charleston White was. Okay. Go to Dusty Vision TV and check out Charleston White, my video from early 2020. But what are your thoughts on some of the things that Charleston White has said? Charleston White says some interesting things. Sometimes he goes a little bit too far to the to to the to the extreme. Um, I've heard some of the things he said from other people's mouths, okay, and it made me laugh about because me and one of my good friends had an argument. How are you gonna say something like we should have killed all of them? You should have aborted all of them. How are you gonna say that, man? But and then Charles would come out with the same kind of situation, same thing. I'm like, dude, that's that's some extreme shit. But he, he does speak on a few a few things that I agree with, Ben. Correct. He, and he says is that um, the whole gang culture is like a cancer in the community, man. Mm. It does not benefit the community. Everybody's putting in work. Everybody's putting in work. And putting in work, it's killing other black men. Help me understand how that how did that benefit anybody? How are we winning on that? I'll never understand that, man. You know, when you're talking about, you know, even on my channel, I saw somebody said, so-and-so, they wasn't real killers, okay? And and I'm sorry, and I think it's, I think it's real killers. I'm thinking in the, in the, in the, te- the content to you then, he was talking about somebody that actually put people down, okay? Why is that a badge of honor? Why is that important, especially when we got enough people already gunning for us as it is, why we have to gun for each other, and and we getting brought, we getting street hood credit for killing each other, and then and then then we get then everybody else is is gets condemned, uh, can canceled for putting hands on somebody, but that's what that's we do it for a hobby, okay? And I know people all all the police did it. Yeah, wait 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 wait. 
But who does it? Who gonna stand up for you and Pookie? When, when Pookie put you put hands on you, put a bullet in your head. And that's one thing I do agree with Charleston White. We have to realize, man, we got a lot of shit. To, we have we have a lot of shit of our own. We have to clear out of our own closet. Okay, and mm-hmm. something we got at some point in time. We got to realize that it's not worth. We're, we're, we're working backwards, like like you said um, earlier. We're working backwards. We're going backwards. Mm-hmm. You know, we, at one point in time, gang violence had man had, had curtailed. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gang violence had kind of curtailed. The whole gang thing was kind of going the way of crack cocaine. At one point in time, crack cocaine was the shit. <laughs> and now, yeah, people still do it, but it ain't nowhere near what it was in the 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. Okay? The money is not there no more. Okay? So a lot of cats who was doing that is driving Uber, driving trucks, driving for Amazon. Folks, not most cats didn't want to do it back then, but because jobs had dried them so bad, that was the first option. And it looked like a very profitable option. Once they went through it, went through the system, got out of it, you can't melt and pour them back in their game no more. And now, um, when I, I've talked to a lot of my boys who was who was in the uh, game at one time, they all buying buying diesel trucks and box trucks and driving for Amazon or got four or five cats doing the same thing. So anyway, when you when you when you understand that a lot of what we experience in, in our community is by design. It's not by happenstance. It's not just by some, oh, we're going to put crackers going to fall, show up on, on and cracking some guns, show up in Compton. No shit, how did that happen? I don't know, man. I think it was the crack fairy, the gun fairy dropped off a bunch of guns and crack. It was an Easter bunny, the, the the gun bunny or some shit. Come on, man. Somebody asked about that on, on, on the chat room I, during the week about that situation with the guns and Compton. Yeah, that happened. That really happened, man. Ain't nobody, mm-hmm. you know, people who people people from the hood know it happened. It's not a hood fairy tale. It's a real situation. So, who had that kind of money to buy a truckload or a train full of guns? Just leaving there, and then oh shit, we forgot the bullets, and all of a sudden uh-huh. the bullets show up. <laughs> Come on, yep. man. Come on. But we keep buying, yeah, keep buying into the bullshit because somebody sings about it. Makes it cool, and we determine what cool is. We determine what cool is. We determine what cool is on all of them, all for everybody. If we say yep. it's cool, huh? Yep, facts, and that's why I tell people. If it don't fly. If we say it don't fly. If right now we say game making ain't gonna fly no more, guess what? It'll be over with. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. and here's the part that, that that people when I say it's 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 like a cancer in the community. Yeah, they got they got biker gangs. They got. Asian gangs got all kind of gangs, and but most of those gangs don't intertwine that much with the civilian community. Most whatever problems they have, pretty much you can tell to them. The, the elves agents do not like the Mongols, no doubt about it. Okay, and very few, do you, very 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 few times have you heard of a bunch of civilians getting hurt because of their situation. That happens with us every day. Okay, I mean, like you said. Four gunmen show up at a, at a laundromat and shoot at 10 people, including kids. Come on, man. What the kids got to do with this? Why are you traumatizing kids? Mm-hmm. Why are you traumatizing kids? I tell you what, if they weren't black and they, somebody else did something like that, we'd have a oh. fucking fit. Lonzo, if this, and, and once again, I love my gay folks out there, but if someone walked into a, a gay party, I'm going to just say gay party, and 10 people were shot, this would be the number one story in the country right now. Yeah. 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 If, if, man, if, if anybody other than us did that to us, it would be the number one story on all the black platforms. That too, man. Uh, that, if, a white, if a white man walked into a black church and, at church and shot 10 people, this would be, once again, the biggest oh, story. Man. Mm-hmm. If four white dudes did that to a black a black folks in a laundromat, everybody in his mama would be strapped up looking for them fools. Man, 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 man. But for us, for us, it gets written off for being part of the game. Mm-hmm. And my question mm-hmm. again is, what game are we playing that we don't never win? We don't never win. Ain't no winners. People that got shot gonna lose. People did the shooting go lose. The family's gonna lose, the community gonna lose, the the, the, the 
the laundry, the laundry uh, owner, he, he gonna lose? Cause for a person who has somebody die at a venue, dude, you swear, you swear, I shouted myself. I didn't know the person. Well, Cause he mm -hmm. died at the property. You know, I, I didn't know nothing. He died on your property. You were responsible. You culpable. It's your, mm -hmm. it's your fault. Somebody walked up and did something. Ha! It's, mm -hmm. it's laundry match fault not having proper security. Because you don't find you a, a, a shiesty ass lawyer that's going to come up with a justification that it was a laundry match fault that people rolled by and shot through his window. He should have had bars up. Should have had plate glass, bulletproof. Why, why, would, why would I have to do why? all this? What happened before? We're terrorists in our own community, man. You know We're saying? terrorizing our own community, dude. That's the part that nobody get, man. But because it's justified, swept under the rug as being, you know, oh man, this is how the hood is. The hood, the hood is that way because we make it that way. Ain't nobody coming outside the hood and doing nothing no dirt to us. Mm. Yes, the police do fuck with us. I've been a victim of the police myself. But if there was consequences, more people start filing complaints. Or whatever the case may be, they would they would be a lot more they would be a lot more respectful. I tell you what, when you when you move out the hood and other folks move in, they won't have the same problem. They they they're gonna make they're gonna make sure they have consequences. They're gonna show up to city council meetings. They're they gonna, gonna show up to the school count whatever PTA yeah PTA meeting. They ain't gonna let a shoe sale or uh uh the fight or the gang stop them from going to take care of their kids. But they'll have had a phone on, have it on their phone, sitting in the, in the damn auditorium, but they're not gonna let that stop them. Okay, and they gonna they gonna know the captain of the dog and police department. They gonna know the captain. That, yeah. They gonna they gonna be a part of the block club. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. So damn, them, man. everybody gonna know everybody's name, and everybody gonna have everybody, everybody's phone number, and they gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be some movement done. Okay, we ain't gonna get, they ain't gonna go for it. That's the difference. We go for everything. We sit back and accept everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Um, going back to, to Charleston White, because you said a couple of things during uh, this conversation that I want to touch on. But he said, uh, um, when you said, go, uh, can you be a successful YouTuber and keep your dignity? Now, I invited him on my show well over a year ago because I agreed with a lot of the stuff that he said back then. But then he started putting extra stuff on top of it. Him and I were supposed to do business together. I, I had a show called The Uncle Tom Show where I kind of, you know, talk about issues that were similar to his. And we, I have his number. We talked and, and I just, I, I told him back in, you know, whatever, March of 2020, I was like, you're, you're too out there for me, man. And this is 90, not even 90% of what he's doing now, Lonzo. So he's just, it just seemed like, so I said, I got to stay away from you, man. I'll be cool with you from afar. But, you know, he started saying some very interesting and disrespectful stuff. And my, I think it's to get views in my personal opinion. Um, I could be wrong. He likes the attention. And that's where the whole can you be a successful YouTuber and still keep your dignity thing just really hit me. You know, I saw a video of him the other day. He was someplace where a bunch of cats talking about, I'm here. Ain't nobody going to do this. He's going to stop on the hood of a car. And he ain't no big dude talking to, talking to, talking to gang ahead. And I'm like, dude, why you, know, why you got to do that? But uh, rumor has it, he's, a, he's, a, he's affiliated with Jake Prince. Okay. That's I didn't know that. Huh? I didn't know that. Okay. Well, rumor has it. I, I saw another video that said he was supposed to be connected to Jay Prince, and mm -hmm. you know that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either one of them. But that's mm -hmm. that's what I that's what I was told. He uh, he was either today with Jay Prince, and you know everybody got a lot of respect for Jay Prince. So he tends. I don't know what he's calling that car, but he's doing. In some cases, I've seen him do some antics that remind me of '69. Okay. Oh and, yeah. Standing on cars, calling people out, blah blah blah. Okay, man, that's cool, but is it, that really necessary? Okay, you know they shut this channel down, right? Oh yeah, a couple times. His channel's been shut down a couple times. He has a new one now, as of like a week ago, and he's already at like fifty thousand subscribers. But yeah, he's uh, he keeps getting shut down because he said some very controversial shit. Right, he was one of them cats that was trying to get us to vote for Trump by mistake. No nah, man, you cool, but you ain't that cool. <laughs> That was one of the reasons I even had him on my show back then, because it was just before it was, you know, well before the election. And I'm seeing this dude with the Make America Great Again hat. And then not only that, I'm like, okay, that's interesting, but I'm seeing him, okay, he was a gangster back in the day. He says he was a crip. So I was like, all right, this dude would be an interesting guy to have on my show. 
brought them on, converse, great conversation. And then just like I said, over the months, I was just like, what are you doing? Just cringing, just disrespecting Nipsey Hussle. He disrespected Gonzo, RIP to Gonzo, who just passed away this past week. He, you know, he, he's just doing a lot for cloud and views. Right. And, you know, and that's something, man. When did we start disrespecting the dead, man? Man. When did that become fashionable, dude? I mean, that's, that, that is, a, well, excuse me, that's like a byproduct. And I say this whole generation is all about respect, but as soon as they want to piss you off, they do something disrespectful. I, I, I used to have a girlfriend. I used to have a thing about being called an asshole, okay? I did not like being called an asshole. Because you were an asshole. <laughs> Because you were an asshole, I'm sure. <laughs> I was, okay? Um, and I, I told her, baby, please, do whatever you do. Don't call me an asshole. And guess what she did? The first thing she got mad at my ass. Of course, okay. yeah. First thing she did, asshole. Okay. <laughs> so, when, here it is. There are certain things you know are major violations, not, in, not just in the street, but in life itself, okay? Certain things you just don't do, man. And new people run to those things, first chance they get to try and get some clout. And that's why I say the internet has been a great, great invention, but it ain't for everybody, man. It ain't for everybody. And some people abuse it and it, they misuse it. And I see that a lot. And like I said before, when you have a generation that everything is about respect, uh, disrespecting me, I felt they disrespected me. I felt some kind of way. And But yet still, when you get upset, the first thing you want to do is run to a disrespectful move to try and counter or get get a reaction out of somebody, then you ain't done nothing, but you did the same thing yourself. You played you playing the wrong game. Yeah, man. 